I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan. This one has a rather interesting history behind it. It's called Yazzy, and it started out as a ZX Spectrum game. The designer, and I hope I'm saying his name right, was Dennis Grachev, and he made it for the Yandex Retro Games Battle 2019, and he did it in only six days. And because it was so well received, they decided to port it to Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis because why not? And here are the credits for all the people who made that possible. I made sure to include that full screen here along with RetroSouls.net so that everybody gets their just due besides just Mega Cat Studios who took this game and put it on a physical cartridge for Sega Genesis and of course Mega Drive. If you're looking to pick it up, Mega Cat Studios has several different versions of it available. Complete in box, $49.99. Cartridge only, $40. Mega Drive, $49.99. Mega Drive cartridge only, $40. They generously gave me this demo downloadable ROM for use to play, demo, talk about the game. And you'll notice right away that it feels very familiar if you're a fan of Load Runner, you see gold bars, you see ladders. It's obviously a game where you're going to collect all the treasure in the level to end the level. Unlike Load Runner, there's not a ladder that you have to traverse once you collect all the gold bars. You simply collect everything in sight and the level is over. Now you do get to break blocks, but you're not using those blocks to trap enemies, kill enemies, or make them respawn after they've been killed. The only reason you use the pickaxe is to get from one area to another to get a gold bar that you've not previously picked up. So what you have to do is use them selectively. They're one time only. Once you use a pickaxe, it's gone from your inventory. So choose wisely. Also, these green platforms I wasn't sure at first that those were traversable, but if you hold down, you fall right through them. So sometimes the levels are designed in such a way that you have to fall all the way through, including bars at the bottom, and scroll back through the top. This should be somewhat familiar to those who have played the Atari 7800 homebrew game, Ricky and Vicky, where the puzzles were solved in a vertical way where you had to fall through the bottom of the level, come back out at the top in the right place, and then use it to traverse the platforms. But in this case, you're actually scrolling the screen left and right, not working in a single screen and not having any other way to complete the levels, but falling through the top. There are many different ways to complete a level. It's really up to you how you collect all the gold bars. You just have to avoid the enemies and pick them all up. And once you pick them all up, the level ends. There are hazards, of course. I just mentioned the enemies. There's also fire. You can't walk over that or you die. You land in it, you die. So you have to avoid the fire. And sometimes you'll get yourself in a dead end where you can't get to another gold bar because You've put yourself between fire and the gold and you can either commit suicide by walking into the fire or hit the B button and automatically end the level and retry. But you can retry as many times as you want. And every five levels, it gives you a password to save your progress. So if you want to go back and keep playing from a certain point, you just have to know that every time you complete five levels, that's like your save point. And I think that's fairly effective for a platforming style game like this. I wouldn't expect them to put battery backup in a Sega Genesis homebrew unless it was something really extensive. A role-playing game, a strategy turn-based game, something that you would really want to save the progress on. Of course, if you're playing this in an emulator, you can just use save states and save your progress anywhere you darn well feel like. And I'm sure that some of the EverDrive type products that are available for Sega Genesis and Genesis clones will let you do save states as well. So you don't have to use the password system. It's just in there 
to provide the convenience of being able to go back to a certain point once you power down whatever you happen to be powered up with. And that was the password right there as an example. So there is a plot of sorts. It's not really that important, but I'm going to tell you what it is anyway, because I feel like I'd be doing Mega Cat Studios a disservice after they were kind enough to supply this ROM for me to review. Yazzie yes, is an arcade style dungeon puzzler packed action. That doesn't seem like a complete sentence. Action game? I, I think they left a word out there. Play as Marthan, the careless gold seeker who has wandered into a strange mansion full of traps and mystery. Guide Marthan through the mansion to collect pixel illustrious gold, avoid ghostly enemies, and try not to succumb to the deadly traps. That's a lot of superlatives to describe a load runner slash montezuma's revenge type game where you collect all the treasure and advance to the next room but hey if you ain't trying you ain't winning and they certainly are trying to win with the features they list on the game page tight responsive arcade controls 25 plus puzzles 60 50 megahertz speed correction and single player campaign i think it's fairly obvious it's a single player campaign doesn't look like multiplayer or head-to-head -head player but you know I think Yazzie could actually be ported to that if it was done in a split screen like it would be a race to see who could collect all the gold faster whoever would get all the gold in a level on either side of the screen before the other person does in the shortest amount of time would be the winner I'm sure you could even do that on a live stream if you could sync up two people perfectly playing Yazzy on two different consoles you could do a speed run and whoever completes the levels the fastest would be the winner so you could have head-to-head -head two player competition with this type of game in fact i get the feeling Yazzy would be a great game for an event like awesome games done quickly i could see people perfecting their technique to get through these as fast as possible and certainly if it came from a game jam and was developed in only six days that's pretty much the audience I would expect it to be for is people who are passionate about homebrew handcrafted game experiences who want to honor the creators of those experiences by showing off just how fun it is to go for the gusto completing the game in the fastest possible time and challenging others to best that record. You've got to love some of the innovative, unusual ways that they come up with to finish games, like two people using one controller or the fastest time to beat the game using a Guitar Hero controller. There's all sorts of wacky things they do, and Yazzy could easily be adapted to any of those kind of formats because it is essentially a really simple game. That's not a negative. I don't want you to interpret it as such. Load Runner is essentially a simple game. You pick up gold and you leave the level. That's what this game is. Games like Montezuma's Revenge, which I mentioned earlier. Simplicity is not a bad thing if you use complex level design and pair it with that simplicity to make players experience the challenge and think their way through it. Jumpman for Commodore 64 would be another great example of that. You have a very simple premise. You have to collect all the rings and avoid the shots that are traveling through the levels. And whenever you're on a horizontal or vertical plane that lines up with those levels, they shoot right at you. So you have to know when you cross their paths, you're in harm's way. So you avoid those and you pick up the treasure and it creates platforms and ladders as you pick up the treasure and you clear the level by solving that puzzle. It's the same thing here. Same thing with those other games that I previously mentioned. You just need to use the simplicity of the game within the complexity of the level. And once you solve that level, it's immensely satisfying. You're like, aha, I figured out the right path. Now I get to go to the next level and figure that one out. And it's, it's a self-feeding system. It reinforces itself. You get that little buzz every time you solve the puzzle. Like, 
yeah, I want to go on to the next one now. Super Meat Boy, The End is Nigh. I mean, it's all within this same framework. It's the reward, the endorphin rush that you get. The controls may be simple, but the puzzles don't have to be simple. And I like the way that Yazzie levels it up as you start. It teaches you the basic elements like, okay, here's how you use the pickaxe. Here's how you fall through the beams. Here's how you avoid the enemies. Here's how you place the things that you want to happen. Like you got to dig for the gold here, but you got to avoid the enemies here. You've got to navigate your way through this world. And sometimes you have to trick the enemies just like Load Runner, you have to get them to move to where you want them to so you can pick up the gold bar and then be able to get back to a ladder without being hit by the enemy. As you can see there, I'm kind of getting into a bind where it's like, okay, I'm going to have to run all the way over and go back down to avoid these guys and not have them respawn before I can get to the next gold bar. You really have to plan your route carefully. So Yazzie rewards your puzzle solving skill thinking critical analysis ability and it makes it fun to go through each level and see what's coming next you're always looking forward to that next challenge now let's rate the game in terms of the elements i think the graphics are fairly obviously ported from a lower res lower pixel lower color set that the ZX Spectrum was limited to. Again, not saying that like it's a bad thing because many people made many creative decisions that resulted in highly enjoyable, well-beloved ZX Spectrum games, but they took that limited set that was originally in the game when it was made for the Game Jam and they beefed it up a little bit, but the basic elements are still simple. Once again, simple is not necessarily bad. Voxel is simple, but Voxel isn't bad. In fact, I would even go so far as to say it reminds me of Voxel. The squared off look of your protagonist would definitely be like QB from Voxel. And I would also say that the music is serviceable. It's not annoying. It's not necessarily an all-time classic that you're going to be humming it later after you played this game, but it's not going to be obnoxious and annoy you and go, oh my god, I can't believe the sound on this game. And the sound effects when you move through areas, pick up gold bars, destroy bricks with your pickaxe, they're all serviceable. Again, not the best, greatest game design for sound ever. I don't know that you would get awards and recognition and praise in the industry like for the best sound design in a homebrew video game the award goes to Yazzie I wouldn't go that far but I think if you don't necessarily expect what Jim Sterling would call triple A then it's fine it's a homebrew game with homebrew sound homebrew graphics and they're all acceptable. They're not shoddy looking. There is polish and effort put into the presentation here. It doesn't make you think it's just low budget, cheap shovelware crap. This is a game that, as the opening credits said, was lovely ported. I know they meant lovingly, but Let's give them the benefit of the doubt that something got lost in translation there. It was lovely ported to the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, and the effort shows. I like the bouncing of the items as well. I think that's a nice, cute little touch that also emphasizes, here, this is something to collect. In fact, it kind of has that old 1930s cartoon style that people associate with Cuphead where everything was constantly in motion. The animators were so desperate to show you that they were animating things that the characters had to bounce every single second they were on the screen. There's a certain charm to that as well. Mega Cat. Thank you. 